Today, I want to talk about something very cool here, about more space inside of space than space. One of the coolest topics I've seen, Doctor Who, the TV show, this spaceship here, TARDIS, um, the moment you enter this box, this telephone booth, um, this over here becomes what's inside of it, a giant spaceship. Um, as you can see, there's a bunch of different pictures here of it. And I want to explain how this is possible in reality, in everyday life. This is theoretically possible in real everyday life because perception and illusions and biotechnology. Bio-augmented reality will one day allow you to do this. First and foremost, you need overlayer bio-augmented reality, permanent re-simulation of exactly the universe except small micro edits that you desire so basically what happens in reality when you get into this box you kind of just sit inside that box and do nothing that's it um this same exact thing here can be experienced in fantastic beasts and where to find them um this box here has a gigantic alternate universe inside of it. This is from the Harry Potter universe. And this is also possible in re reality as well. The moment you think of opening your briefcase to go inside of it, you actually just park your vessel in reality and enter the bio-augmented reality state. In bio-augmented reality, um, your will, your haptics, your, your con remote controls, everything that you choose to do in your body is actually going to shift over into the other realm into the other multiverse, basically. And it's not a whole separate universe. This is a bio-augmented reality realm. It's a, kind of like an add-on, in a way. That's how it will work in reality one day. We be, Because we are already at the point where we're using technology in order to save vision and stuff like that. Haptic is your feelings, your senses, everything that makes you you. So when we get into biotechnology, into computer integration... And soul science, soul is every little piece all at once. Then, then it goes into universe re-simulation, and then it goes into more space than space. And this is one of the coolest topics I really wanted to talk about is just how it's possible and how we can achieve that in the future. Because at the same time, if two people are installing the same exact software, um, you can both enter this booth and kind of just park your vessel, but really you're playing around in this realm instead. And then you get to do fun time travel experiments. And that comes into pre-computed time as well. With pre-computed time, you could actually leave that bio-augmented reality time-dialed zone, which would be the in-between. Being in this, in this time right here, your, your vessel's parked, you've already left your vessel, and you're inside of this more space than space, virtual augmented reality soul capture realm, and then when you're messing around with the uh, flanges and you want to, you know, use the actual time machine, you will go into a pre-computed time, and that has to do with smallest factorial ingredients, so... In order to create, you know, half an hour of the 1960s, it in pre-computed time, it's it's actually not that hard when you have smallest factorial ingredients. And Google is going to be coming out with this shortly. It's already selling this kind of um, level of technology to colleges, but it's going to be cool to see what we're going to do with the um, with the all the possible options, like what I'm talking about right now, is that will come to B, eventually, as we are able to distribute and control and monitor bio-augmented reality. Because the number one fear is um, tyranny within bio-augmented reality. Because if it's fallen in nefarious hands, then it's just a complete disaster. But if it's something that we can control, we can make things beautiful like Doctor Who and Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, we can make things like this, and much, much, much more. I'm talking about Marvel in real life. You, you 
can be a superhero tomorrow. Just take this pill one time. And that is a real life. Like, the Matrix in real life is a thing that's going to be coming out soon because you are technology. And your neurons firing to your eyes, like, that's going to be one day a controllable, hackable thing. And if we're talking about where is your soul right now, as long as we have the blessings of those tyrannists that I was talking about before, or God, which is preferably the truth, God is the one that's going to get to this point first and help us achieve raid root conscious or soul or um, haptic, you know, storage. Haptics meaning feel, yeah, human feeling, human interface, that like everything that you are. This is one thing that I really like with pre-computed time is how big can your idea be? If you set a limiter on how big something can be, then you can just say that thing twice, that thing a hundred times. And then if you set a limiter on that, right, now we're talking about just repeating something over and over and over and over. And how many times in the moment can you repeat the biggest thing? That is really what's going to define how big your pre-computed time variable will be. So for us earlier conscious beings, um, our ideas are a lot smaller and a lot more containable within infinity plexings and pre-computed times and things like that. So it's going to be a lot easier to create this kind of stuff for us. Rather than if we were ancient beings, we would be a lot harder to contain within our infinities and our memories because our memories are a part of it too. You got. You can't forget your memories are who you are. So that's an encryption to that which is you. So every little facet has to be accounted for or you fail the password of the universe. And that's where I'm going to leave it off today. Thank you guys for watching. I hope this inspires you and helps you out. I hope this brings you guys peace. And love, good day.